Stephen A. and Max Kellerman. Uh, these guys had a show prior to that. It used to be with what? Skip Bayless and Skip and uh, Stephen A. used to do first take. And a Max comes in, and I think Skip goes with uh, Shannon Sharp. Uh, and by the way, Shannon, one of my favorite speeches, uh, Hall of Fame, Shannon gave it when he said he believes his brother needs to be in. I don't know if you remember that speech he gave saying Sterling Sharp needs to be in the Hall of Fame as well. Right. And Sterling was in tears. But Stephen A. And, and you and Skip, where did all these issues start? Did the issues start with you being on and saying, you know, Max is blacker than you are, Stephen A.? Because you tweeted out the other day, like a month ago, you put it out, and then Stephen A. had to respond to it. Where did the issue with you and Stephen A. start? Uh, I think it started with that comment um, that I that I mentioned about, you know, Max being, you know, blacker than Steve, or seeming to be black, you know, kind of understanding more black topics. And at that time, we were talking about the Colin Kaepernick situation um, when he was trying to get back in the league. And so he was just – it was – it was just so against what Colin Kaepernick was, was doing. And so, again, at that point in time, uh, I don't know how the flow of the conversation went, but Max was making more sense with the commentary um, towards that topic. And that's where I was. I said it tongue in cheek because if you watch the clip, I was laughing and I didn't really think much. I didn't think too much of it. And obviously he took offense to it. And then obviously it resurfaced, uh, like you said, about a month ago. And all I did was it was something he mentioned on Joe Budden's. Uh, he was mm-hmm, talking about mm-hmm. uh, why Max. He was part of the reason why Max is not on the show. He didn't like him. He said he was. He wrote ocean. in his book, by the way. He, he broke it Something down in his book. Something about him being yeah. oceans apart because he wasn't an athlete. And he, I guess I didn't, he didn't go to school to be a journalist or what have you. But that doesn't discount a guy's knowledge for anything, information or whatever the topic may be. And so I just basically – and like I said, I didn't bring up – I didn't put up the clip. Some The other fans saw the – You the, retweeted it. Right. Yeah. Some The fans saw the podcast and they reacted to his comments. And so I didn't know what happened. I, I just kept getting alerts. And I was being tagged, and so I just saw it, and I'm like, facts. That's all I said. And so obviously he took offense to it, and uh, yeah, it, we went, went, got into a little, little war of words right there. What did we, he asked the question on his uh, rebuttal to you. He says, what does it mean to be blacker? What, what does that mean? What does it mean? Well, it was the topic in which they were discussing. Like I said, me being, like I said, being a black black American, like I said, me understanding how we talk in the streets and as it relates to whatever talk, uh, whatever topic, it seemed that Max would have been more keen on the culture than he was as far as his, I guess, his responses to uh, whatever topics that we were we were talking about at that time. And that, that was what? That was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was uh, when, you know, Kaepernick didn't want to show up unless of the contract or the agreement because what Stephen A. was saying, the fact that you would have shown up anytime, any place, and you probably would have shown up without a contract. You would have just showed up to see how, you know, whether you, you, you know, the teams want to see because you were confident. Like, anytime, any place, I'll come run routes with anybody. Right, but there was something along, there was something added or, or, or taken out of the contract that he had to sign that's not standard. It wasn't standard uh, for whatever he had to sign. And so for whatever reason, his man, uh, Colin, speaking uh, his management, Colin's management team, they saw something wrong or saw something kind of fishy with that. And they, again, they changed their mind at the last minute and went somewhere else. That doesn't mean that, you know, again, he can't play or he can't be evaluated the same. If there was something fishy about it, then, yeah, I probably would have taken a different route as well. It doesn't matter. Football fields, they're all the same size no matter where you go. You think you think with Kaepernick, uh, you think the NFL was more uh, against him playing or you think Kaepernick was his own worst enemy? Because there's two arguments, right? There's these arguments where, you know, uh, uh, guys will sit there and they'll say, You know, uh, dude, if you really want it, don't sign any contract. Just come and watch me, okay? I'm not signing nothing. Just come watch me play, okay? Forget about the contract. I'm going to be there. Here's where I'm going to be. Bring your guys. Watch what I got, okay? Stop acting like a victim all the time. And, you know, Kaepernick recently, uh, I think, came out, whether it's in a documentary or a book, talking about that, you know, my my, the, the family that adopted me. You know, they injected certain thoughts and all this other stuff. And, you know, some communities are like, dude, they, they at least gave you, you – know, here's Carl Cabin on CNN calls out adoptive parents racism as he promotes new graphic novel. Well, he was telling – I mean, his white the, – the, the white 
adoptive parents were white that adopted him, but the, the week that people were questioning the timing, because the week that this book was coming out, he was like, oh, by the way, my parents were racist. The white parents showed me racism so, in the so, house. So do, for a guy that's, that, that's played in the league a long time, um, uh, uh, one of the best to ever do it, some call maybe the best to ever do it as a receiver, do you think it's more the NFL you know, uh, trying to hurt Kaepernick, or do you think Kaepernick is being a victim and getting in his own way? I mean, it could be a little bit of both, okay. um, but I think it's like, okay, obviously there was an, uh, a settlement reached um, with the suit, so obviously there's something there. Um, but I think I, I've heard it. You know, I, I've heard some people say it too. It's like, okay, you've sued the 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 the, the company that you're actually now to trying to go back and play for. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. It, it's it's a weird kind of dynamic, right? Um, so I don't know if that is factoring or playing a part as to why they're not allowing him to play. But bro, you got to you got to understand, like you can't you, you can't sit up here and say that the guy can't play. And and I and I'm not. If you look at the the like I guess the quality of quarterbacks that are in the league now that are playing, um, you know, f for for instance, like Zach Wilson. I mean, he was drafted number two pick what a few years ago. Clearly, you got to think that somebody could go in there and play better than Zach Wilson. And I like I. I actually watched the game last night because I've been rooting for the guy because I'm like, man, he has. He's shown signs of what he could be as to why he was drafted. He was a second pick a couple of years ago. And so obviously it's unfortunate for, for Aaron. But again, I'm like, okay, now this guy's been thrust back on the scene. I think for me, it's like God's giving you another opportunity. Like, can you, can you seize this moment? Um, again, like I said, whatever doubts or mental struggles he's had over the first two years, okay, now – Okay, you bring in Aaron. Okay, you kind of been humbled a little bit. Okay, now you need to kind of really prioritize what you need to do to get better because clearly this organization has taken uh, vested into you for for the pick in which they chose you, and so now he's back on the scene. And obviously, like I said, I'm like I said, I've been rooting for the guy to like really just come out of this funk and really play like he's capable of playing. Uh, I think when you saw him play against the, the Kansas City Chiefs, you if you if you just if you didn't know who Zach Wilson was and you knew that Aaron Rodgers mm. were supposed to be playing this year and you looked at those passes, if you just saw a clip and you looked at those passes, you would have thought Aaron Rodgers was <laughs> yeah. throwing those passes. Yeah, he's a stud. Well, though, he was a stud in that game is yeah. what he's trying to Rest say. Yeah, yeah. He's not yeah. saying he was, I was at the game. Right. We were at the game in, in New York, right? We went to watch him play against the Patriots a uh, a couple oh. weeks ago, went to the Yankees. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Went to the, you forgot already. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so so we, we watch him play, and, and, and I feel what you're saying. He yes. shows signs, but so, you're saying Kaepernick is better than Zach. I'm, I'm saying he can, he can play if He can't play worse than Zach. I, 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 bro, you can't. I can play right now given the opportunity. And I'm not just saying that just to be saying it, bro. I'm, I'm telling you, I can play. People have watched me train. Yeah, training. We're gonna, like, I can go out and play right now if I, could, if I was given the opportunity to. To play 60, 70 steps, no. Understanding who I am and what I, where I am at, at, at age, third down, red zone, that's where I would be a viable asset to a, to a team. But we're talking Colin Kaepernick right now. You're trying to tell me his skill set and what he's done and what – who cares? You can bring up stats as to what his record was when he last played. There are guys that are playing now. You can be equally the same or worse. But I know I feel like he has the ability to, to play. But, again, to your point, like, is he stepping in his own way? I have no idea. Um, only the ones that, that – the, the powers to be can answer that. It's Cap a friend of yours? Like, do you guys talk regularly? No, I've reached out to Kaepernick a couple times. I've seen Cap a couple of times here and there. So it's not like you guys are friends and relationship, buddy, buddy, dinner right. all the time? Yeah, yeah, I'm not – yeah, I, I don't have I a dog you. in the fight. I, I got yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. That's but good. I, I've reached out to him. Even when he was on this trail of trying to – working out with guys, I was I had reached out. I even know some people Did that know Did he get him. back to you? Did no. Oh, so no. you and Cap have never communicated? No. no Wait I, a minute. Never, not once. No. no that, I, I, that's I, a very interesting because, you know, if somebody would have watched that with you and and uh, and uh, Stephen A. and Max, no. they would have thought, like, you guys talked to Colin right before and you're his boy and you're defending no. him and all this. So this is very weird to hear this now. I'm just under – I just understand the dynamics of, of, of what's going on. And I understand, <clears throat> like you said, when you talk about the contract that they signed, yeah. like there's – Certain language in there, they went in there to amend certain things. But here dude, if he's not getting back to you, okay, to you, 
You, you, you're not, you, no, but but I'm, I'm, I get you're it. not even in it. All I'm saying is from an outsider. I'm not involved. Right. So you don't even need to comment on this. I'm just giving right. you mine. All I'm saying is right. from an outsider. Here's a Hall of Fame fucking you know receiver that is defending you, and you don't want to even you know give him. That tells me more about his character, if you ask me. And I, you don't yeah. even yeah. say. No, I'm telling you, it. those are my words that I'm saying this. But right. going back to Stephen A. I like Stephen A. Okay. Right. There's there's some people that don't like Stephen A. Right. And, and there's a lot of those, and there's some that like him. What's your What's your biggest challenge with Stephen A. Or if any, if you don't, if you say I don't have any challenges with him, what's your biggest challenge with him? I don't know if there's a challenge, but I think it's a consensus. Like for people that have had, I guess, uh, an experience or encounters with him, that watch him, um, the, I think they've seen a kind of shift and change in 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 his his delivery or. I guess his objective takes against certain athletes versus other athletes. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, he'll try to really differentiate, you know, why he says certain things about certain guys and or not. Or he could say he talks about everybody the same. Um, but when it when it comes to certain athletes, I think, you know, it's, it's a different tone. It's a different energy. Um, and for me, um, you know, we came across each other, I guess, some, some years ago. Um, he's talked very highly of me. Um, he's defended before, you on many uh, occasions uh, before. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, I just didn't like. Uh, I, I didn't like the way it came across when he had his obviously his, his podcast, obviously millions of viewers, and he was holding up. You know, he was holding up. You know, paper like he had documents <laughs> on me, like like he had something on me. And I'm like, and it, it to, and you do that, and you're like, oh well, I've talked to this guy. I've, they told me not to do it, this and that, but I have a lot of stuff on you. And I'm like, like you would think that, uh, like he has something on me. What is it that you have on me yeah. that you you can't reveal? Like, and I encouraged him, like whatever it is. I'm like, if it's not in the courthouse or in a in, in a in a in a, in a uh, police precinct, then I'm good. What you had, like you had classified documents. <laughs> Against me, I guess, uh, with something that I've done wrong. And so that he was going to, like he said, he was going to expose me. That was his word. He was going to expose me. Expose me for what? Like, I'm a very open and honest guy. I'm an open book, you know? Um, so, I'm like I tell I, even with my dating life, I'm an open book. So I'm, I just, I'm hard to read. You know what I mean? So with that, you know, I just, I didn't like that about it, that he felt like, and it made, it, it insinuated that he had something on me, or that he was going to expose something uh, about me that I guess the public didn't know. Um, like I said, whatever the case may be, and then he insinuated that it was, you know, what, um, there was a, a money grab situation um, involved in this because of uh, the suit that my attorney had filed against ESPN with something that happened on the air. And so he was mad and upset about that. So that that's where it all uh, kind of resurfaced or rekindled with that interview uh, with Joe Budden. And then when I responded with the retweet, yeah. when I said facts. The read I get with Stephen A is the following read. I've spent a, a little bit of time with him when, when I was in Connecticut. We did one interview together. That's the only interaction we've had. And I've just watched him. Again, I've watched you guys more than you've watched us because we, we're, we're not playing. You're playing. Right. So we watch your game. And I get the feeling from Stephen A uh, that... He's a guy that is very proud to be African-American, black American. He's very proud. That means a lot to him because that's his family's legacy. That's the feeling I get from him. But also at the same time, the feeling I get from him deep down inside is the fact that there's an element of a, a bit of him being conservative because he was raised conservative and he's got an element of that. And sometimes, you know, bringing those political side of mindset that he has in it gets him in trouble because he can't please everybody. And he's a tough place to be. This is why I think he started his podcast, so he can freely, freely talk to other right. people. But, you know, it, <laughs> exactly. I like that. I actually like that. I like the fact that he's doing that. I like the fact that he's going out there talking to certain people that's going to piss off the community and say, wait a minute, are you black or are you not? You know, are you doing this or are you not doing that? But uh, 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 I, can, I can see both sides. But now that I'm hearing that you're, you've never had a conversation with Kaepernick, yet you're defending him, and he's never gotten back to you 
as as somebody that played for the same team that he played for, and you played there for years, and yeah. the history, all of that, it's a little bit confusing to me. Yeah, but, I even reached out. I know some people that were working for him. I know uh, can, could have gotten in touch with him directly, got in contact with him, and I've had them reach out to him, and still, and 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 nothing. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, it is what it is. I can't, I can't. I'm not going to force myself, force my friendship on anybody. But, but by the way, you know what this does do? You know what this does do? This validates Stephen A. Smith's point. It validates Stephen A. Smith's point on who Kaepernick is. That's what it does to me. Yeah. I didn't know you were going to say that. But what you just said about him validates who Kaepernick really is. That even the guys, listen, in your life, that if you have people that even want to help you, and these are guys that are defending you, and it's not just yeah. any way heavyweight saying this, it just validates Stephen A., uh, maybe what he was trying to say. And, were you trying well, to say and, something? And, then, no, and going back to the Colin Kaepernick thing, it's like I don't understand how – I mean, his the off the field actions, your comments obviously play a role to you when it comes to like the NFL. He compared the NFL combine to modern day slavery, which, and as you know, Tio, if you get invited to the combine, white, black, Hispanic, everybody, that's a that's a that's a, an honor. You know what I mean? To go up there and shine. So he calls that, and then it's kind of hypocritical. Aaron Rodgers goes down. Now you're calling that same league to be like, yo, I want to play with you guys. They're obviously not going to have a good uh, a, t- a taste in their mouth. You know what I mean? Like you just called us. Like, you know, slave owners, basically. So then he accuses his, his white parents of being racist. So I have a question. He, he's capitalized big time. The race thing with Ka- Kaepernick is huge. He's made money with Nike. Didn't he get $40 Di- million from Nike or something N- Nike, like that? Nike, Disney, and then the Netflix documentary, Pat, was insane, if you've actually seen it. So I just want to know, like, for, when you guys see something like that, Tio, do you think that's a genuine cause that he's he's doing? Or is it basically he's doing it for, like, a money? Because that he, he took the – because the victimhood mentality – there's money in that, bro. So, like, do you, do you think that that played a, a, a big role in it? Because, I mean, athleticism aside, he's making what? He made at least $40 million. I don't know what they – can you pull up what they – go ahead. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, obviously, yeah, um, Nike is obviously paying him. Big time. Um, the documentary. Uh, speaking of doc- – I'm getting ready to do a documentary that will be sometime – probably release some around uh, the start of the football season next year. Oh, dope. Uh, I'll be doing it with uh, Amazon. Awesome. Uh, so, What's it about? Uh, just a little bit of everything, you know. Um, your life, but yeah. it's your story. Yeah, yeah. I got my you. life. I got uh, you. Yeah, I mean, but again, it's not going to be some fluff story. I mean, I'm going to, you know, it's going to depict and, and show, like, my imperfections, uh, some of what we talked about, what I went through. Uh, there's some stuff that I haven't talked about, you know, relationship with coaches, um, kind of how I was treated, you know, by certain coaches, uh, Mariucci for one, um, you know, my time there in San Francisco, the transitioning, you know, from, you know, obviously Steve Young to Garcia, um, how I was treated, you know, you know, myself with, you know, compared to Garcia and, and when my contract, you know, negotiations were, were going on and how he was treated. All those things. And so, again, I, I got a number of coaches that, again, that were – they wanted to be a part of uh, this documentary. And I think a lot, a lot now how it has changed when you think about the freedom in which athletes are, are, are talking, especially with podcasts. Mm-hmm. You know, just think if, if I would have had some of these platforms, I would have been able to dispel or dispute some of the things that were being said about me and how the media portrayed me. Uh, Name, like I said, obviously ESPN was the mainstay. Like, you know, just with some of the, you know, even guys that transitioned from the field, uh, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to the desk and how I was being characterized versus other players. Um, those are some of the things that, that, that will be, be revealed. Sick. So, and until you mentioned uh, systemic racism earlier, yep. you spoke in the past with your relationship with, uh, with Steve Mariucci, you said uh, in regards to him, and I'm going to quote, it, it was there talking about systemic racism, but it, you didn't let it bother you. didn't, didn't let it distract you from what you had to do on the field. Right. You experienced it during, and him and under him, you're like, trust me, I've experienced it. Like, can you give any example of like what you actually felt that would constitute systemic racism under a coach like that? Uh, I mean, the, I mean, I'll go more in depth uh, once I do the documentary. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I have coaches, I have players uh, that were there to kind of witness some of those things. Um, but again, it just, yeah, yeah it was kind of like how I was treated versus, you know, uh, you know, maybe just say Garcia. I mean. Um, 
those are some of the things that that I saw. Like I said, it, I don't want to give it away here, but, say, but once the documentary comes out, like I said, bro, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm an open book, bro. And so again, uh, I have no reason to lie about anything because these are my experiences, mm-hmm. and uh, I know for sure. Like you know, there was a time like I was late for. I remember this 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 particular event. I was I was late for for uh, for practice one day. It was uh, around the time that they we were announcing uh, the Pro Bowl votes. Um, for whatever reason, I overslept. And uh, coach at that time, he had this policy because uh, according to the CBA, depending on however many infractions or they fine you this amount, this amount, this amount, what have you. But he had one thing about him. He didn't want to take guys money. So he gave the if you got fined, like you got fined or you were late or whatever the case may be. He didn't want to fine you. He gave you an opportunity to buy the team lunch. And so that was nothing like a few hundred, a few hundred, eight hundred bucks or something like that. A fine, depending on the the degree of it, uh, it could be up to like I think thirty five hundred bucks or whatever. Um, and so I was late. Um, he didn't ask me. He didn't even ask me why I was late. They always uh, point a coach at the beginning of the year uh, to handle the fines with with the guys. So. Just so happened that year, my coach, my receiver coach, happened to be the guy to to, to handle the fines. So uh, we had gone through walkthrough. Uh, like I said, I had missed uh, I had missed the meeting where they announced the Pro Bowl voting. Uh, the guys that made the Pro uh, Pro Bowl, not obviously, I, I had made the yeah. Pro Bowl that year. And so um, he didn't ask me, you know, coach. Okay, George Stewart comes to my locker. He gives me the sheet, the fine, and he fined me, and it was like the maximum. And I'm like, why am I getting fined? I'm like, he didn't even give me the option as the other guys to, to buy the team lunch. He just fined me the max off the off the rip. And not, not even on that, he didn't even ask me why I was late. I could have been in a fender bender. I could have had a family emergency, anything that could have maybe excused or been a little bit lenient as to the fine. He just fined me right off the bat. And so... I looked at it and I told my coach, I was like, I'm not, I'm not paying this. And I literally, I immediately, we had a little back, back hallway to get up to the, to the coach's office. And I went right up to the, I said, I'm, I said, coach, I'm not paying this. And he said, where are you going? So I went and I said, I'm going to his office. And he's like, I'm going with you, big dog. So he followed me all the way up the stairs and there was a reception. I was like, is uh Moochie in, uh, is, is he in the office? And then she left. So she called and said, uh, you know, said I was out front. She was like, send him in. And I took the paper and I said, I'm not. Th- I'm not paying this. Sorry about that, bro. <laughs> Tom, your Tom, notes, notes today. Oh, no. Sorry about that. And I said, I said, I'm not paying this. I said, I'm not paying this. I said, if I have to pay this, I will go out there and I will tell them what I, what have I what I have had, have experienced up to date. If I got to pay this fine, and then shortly after that, rest in peace. Um, um, who was the? Uh, the coach, uh, he was a coach, but then he ended up being the um, Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh being like a consultant. Mm-hmm. I went down to Bill Walsh's office and I told him exactly what happened, and he said, "Don't worry about it." He's like, "I'll handle it," and I didn't end up. Bill Walsh it. said that to you. Yep, and and I because I told him exactly what happened, and there was no reason I didn't lie about anything. And I'm like, "Why would I be fine?" And he given everybody else the option of buying the team lunch. And now, is this I, the first time you're late? It doesn't matter. Even if that, if it was the second, first, second, or third, I, at, I, at that time I don't remember. I, okay, I, to your question, it. I yeah. don't know if it was the first. Because it would, if I'm a coach, it would matter if you're doing it now to punk me in front of my players, and I'm losing credibility. It's very annoying as a coach to go through it. If it is the first time and he's doing that, he's right. an asshole. But if it's not, right. you may also try to get under his skin because players know how to do that as well. Well, again, I, I I knew like at that time, like media, obviously they come to the locker yeah. and, you know, talking about the, the upcoming game, this and that and the other. So I just like, look, if I got to pay this fan, I'm literally I'm going to tell them because I and I mentioned certain events that had happened that I experienced. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. Mm-hmm. And then, I, again, I went down to Coach, uh, Bill, at that time he was a Bill consultant, Walsh. Bill Walsh's yeah. office, and I told him what happened. And he even said that it wasn't right, and then he said, I'll handle it. I didn't end up uh, having to pay the fine, but that was just one of the instances that I, that, I, that, I, that I witnessed. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.